We'll now introduce lesson 43 of ROS. And this will treat noun patterns, apposition, and a bit more in the critical apparatus. The way nouns are formed frequently provides a clue to their specific meaning. But it must be noted that the identification of meaningful patterns in nouns is not always possible or even helpful. Since some Hebrew dictionaries, particularly Brown Driver Briggs, alphabetize nouns according to their triradical root rather than their actual spelling, it may be difficult for a beginning student to find nouns in the dictionary. One must uh, then be familiar with the standard noun patterns in order to use the dictionary efficiently. So here are some ways in which uh, roots can be turned into nouns. Uh, certain roots will form a noun by adding a prefix or prosthetic, uh, uh, prosthetic uh, olive in front. So you have the root uh, shamar to keep, and then you have uh, ashmoret, which is a watch, that is a period of time. A prefix hey is rare and might relate the noun to the hyphial uh, stem. So you have uh, natsal, which means to escape. In the H stem, it would mean to cause to escape or to uh, rescue or deliver. And hence, uh, hatsala uh, is deliverance. Uh, by the way, that should be a kamatz. Uh, under the Sade, uh, that's a, a typo that I just reported to Logos to hopefully fix eventually. Uh, prefix Yod is used for <clears throat> names and adjectives. Many personal names begin with Yod and are formed uh, are forms of the imperfect. So here you have uh, Yachmur, uh, antelope, which is related to Chamor uh, to be Chamar to be red, and then you have reeve to strive, and you get yareve, an adversary, and then you have sahak to laugh, and then you have yitzhak, which is Isaac, which literally means he laughs, probably short for yitzhak el, uh, God laughs. A prefix mem depicts abstract qualities instrumentality or locality. So you have uh, the verb uh, lacham, uh, which in the nithal means to fight. But then you get a noun form with a prefix mem and a feminine ending kamatshe, milchama, which is war, literally a place of fighting. And then you have the word judge, shafat, but then you have mishpat, uh, which is uh, judgment, in this case, an abstraction. Or you can have patah to open, related to the uh, patah, the uh, vowel. Patah to open, but then you have a noun form, mifteach, which is key, which is an instrument for opening. Prefix T's are uh, added to first vav, hollow, or geminate verbs to strengthen them phonetically. Uh, they usually form verbal nouns. So you have yeshav to dwell, but then you have toshav, a settler, a sojourner, a dweller. You have uh, yalad to beget, but then you have tolad, toladot, generations. You have yada to thank in hyphial, and then you get a, a hyphial based uh, noun, uh, toda, which is acknowledgement or thanksgiving, or could even be translated praise. You have uh, yara to uh, teach in the hyphial, <clears throat> and then you have a hyphial based noun, Torah, which is teaching or instruction, uh, and then traditionally translated law. Then you have balal, which means to confuse, used at uh, in the story of the of the uh, Tower of Babel. Wordplay is made on Babel and balal.
uh, there. But then you have uh, tebel, which is confusion. Uh, again, taking the root, adding a T, and being a geminate, it uh, easily loses its second, uh, uh, the last consonant. Some suffixes have an own ending, is used of abstract nouns, adjectives, and rarely, rarely specific persons or conditions. But anyway, you have uh, uh, kadam, which means to be in front. But then you have uh, kadmon, eastern. Again, you orient yourself towards the east. So uh, when you're oriented, in front of you is to the east. So eastern, uh, kadmon. And then you have uh, nasa, uh, nasha, to beguile. But then you have uh, uh, mashalo, masha'on, guile uh, again adding the own ending uh, as well as the prefix mem uh, to that root uh, suffix e is used for adjectives meaning belonging to or an ethnic group so you have the verb to cross over avar and you have the noun form uh, the personal name aber uh, which is one of the ancestors of uh, Ab Abram. Well, from Aber comes Ivri, uh, someone belonging to or deriving from Aber, uh, a Hebrew. And then uh, Kana'an is Canaan, but then you get uh, Kana'ani, a Canaanite. Same thing with the Yisrael, uh, Israel, uh, and then uh, Yisraeli would be a Israelite. Reduplication of radicals is used mainly for adjectives, but nouns, especially those related to hollow or geminate roots, also occur. So uh, here you have uh, Sha'an to be at ease. The noun form adds, uh, reduplicates the, the root, and you get a uh, Sha'anan uh, at ease or secure. Uh, Adam is to be read, but then you get uh, Admadam, where you reduplicate the dal the the uh, uh, the dalit and the mem at the end, and that means reddish. Yafe is beautiful, but then you have Yafe Fiya, which is pretty, a diminutive. Galal, which is to uh, roll is related to Gilgal, a wheel, uh, and then you also have Gilgal, the city. And then you have uh, Galal to roll is also related to uh, Gugolet, uh, which is a head, which I guess if you chop it off, it'll roll. Ten, gemination indicates an adjectival meaning, sometimes intensive, the gemination being connected to the stems that have the middle letter doubled. So here are several patterns. You have uh, chata to sin, but then chata, sinful, turning the noun into an adjective. And then you have uh, ganav, uh, which is to steal, but then ganav, with a doubling, is a thief. Uh, you have uh, uh, Awar, which in the peel means to blind, but then a noun form off of that is uh, uh, Iver, which is a blind person. Uh, and then you have uh, Pasach, to limp, and then you have Piseach, uh, lame. Uh, sometimes uh, these uh, patterns with a doubling of the middle consonant are, so, are sometimes uh, called nouns of profession. Uh, so stealing becomes a thief, limping becomes a lame person, blinding becomes a blind person, uh, someone who is uh, professionally or habitually uh, displaying that characteristic. Uh, but that's the either the piged pattern or the pakad pattern, both uh, often are nouns of profession. Uh, the word adjective from uh, sadiq, which means to be righteous, is sadiq with a doubling. And then you have uh, chanan, to be gracious, 
is related to the noun hanun with a doubling uh, adjective gracious and uh, pakad to teach in the pl uh, becomes pikud a disciple uh, someone who is taught uh, in uh, uh, that particular uh, pattern of noun formation i now move on to uh, 43.2 the syntactical phenomenon of apposition a noun immediately following another noun and written in the same case is said to be an apposition. The absence of a construct relationship or a predication of the second word indicates that apposition has occurred. While the two words could form a subject predicate relationship, as a, if you say uh, David Melech, David is king, uh, it may mean instead. David the king, uh, David Hamelik. And here are a few examples. Vayikha Avram et Sarai Ishto. Abram took, direct optic marker, Sarah, his wife. And here his wife is simply identifying who Sarai uh, is took Sarai, his wife. Or the next one, Vayir uh, Ehu et ha yeled. And that means she, talking about Pharaoh's daughter, she saw him, and then you have another object, the child. So you have a double accusative here, but the who is being identified as a yeled. She saw him, the child, the baby. Or you have the case of ha uh, kuruvim uh, zahav, and that means uh, the cherubim gold, but it means the cherubim of gold. In this case, it's giving the material out of which the cherubim uh, were made. So anyway, uh, that's uh, apposition, and you'll see it from time to time as you do your translations. The last section here has to do with the critical apparatus, and there are a bunch of uh, abbreviations as you look at, uh, particularly for textual criticism, the apparatus, uh, and uh, there are several that are relevant. Uh, you have this symbol here, the little A with a, or olive with a, kind of accent thing on it. Well, that's the Greek recension or translation made by Aquila in an attempt to bring the Greek more literally into harmony with the standard Hebrew tradition. And then you have an S uh, with a, a little acute accent on it, uh, a sigma with an acute accent on it. That's uh, uh, Symmachus. Uh, Aquila uh, came about around 130 and Symmachus around 170. And then you have the recension of Theodotion, which is a theta with a accent thing on it, who uh, revised uh, the Greek with the help of uh, the Hebrew uh, by the end of the uh, second century A.D. at the at the least, perhaps earlier. Uh, Daniel, uh, the uh, Theodotion is uh, the best version in Greek of, of Daniel. And then you have uh, Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Alexandrinus and Codex Vaticanus, indicated by the Septuagint sign with either S or A or B uh, attached to it. Uh, these are some of the more important uh, ancient uh, Greek uh, versions of the Septuagint. Sinaiticus dating to the 4th century, Alexandrinus is to the 5th century, and Vaticanus uh, to the 4th century. And then finally, L represents Codex uh, Leningradinus, uh, the early surviving complete copy of the Hebrew Bible by uh, a member of the Ben Asher family, uh, dating to A.D. 1008. And that's uh, all things that can come into play in textual uh, criticism issues. Eventually, we'll do a little bit of textual criticism, but... Uh, at least uh, knowing the nomenclature uh, would be uh, useful. So that's enough for now. Let it wrote. See you later.